talking in front of people, so I, I'm going to pretend I'm a jewelry show, so I didn't commit with anything. <laughs> so y'all got to be nice to me. <laughs> Alrighty, so thank you, Lori, for asking me and inviting me to, to speak to you. Um, hopefully, maybe you, I can, you, know, you can learn something or at least relate to what I went through. So most of you probably don't know me, so I am Kim. Um, I work full-time at Strong. I've been there almost 20 years now. Um, I have two children. I have a 23-year-old daughter and a 25-year-old son. And I've been a single mom for about 23 years. I became a single mom when my daughter was three weeks old, my son was three years old. And I've been working two, sometimes three jobs ever since to support my kids. And I've been a premier now, I think, three years, something going on, something like that. So, well, you should applaud for that. I know. And just looking at my shows, I have my notes. So <laughs> I can keep on track because I tend to get sidetracked. And so I can um, try to focus. Alright, so as Lori said, my business, a few months ago, my business was not where I wanted it to be. You know, I attended rally in January, which maybe some of you did, most of us did. And if you've been to rallies before, we get all excited, we get pumped, and we're all re-energized and refocused, and woohoo, and we're ready to go, and we get all these grand plans. And then life happens, and you know, a week or two later, or three days, it's that three-day rule that we do with our hostesses and our prospects, well, the same thing happens. You know, if you don't stay motivated and focused, you know, all that excitement from rally um, disappears. And that happened to me. Um, I found myself in what I call my funk. Um, I don't know what the funk came from. I don't know if it was a life funk. I don't know if it was winter and it was gray. But I was not motivated. I wasn't, um, I had no energy. I was tired all the time. I didn't want to do anything but come home and punk my butt on the couch. And the last thing I did was feel like a joy lady. And the more I stayed in this funk, the more uh, depressed I got, and the more disappointed in myself I became. Um, I knew uh, that I could do this business. I mean, Lord knows I've been working my butt off for 20 some years to support my children on my own, so I know what it is to work hard. I'm not afraid to work hard. But I lost my, uh, I draw out my drive, um, and I lost my motivation. And um, the last thing I felt like was a jewelry lady. So maybe some of you have been there before. And to be make matters worse, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I'm on all the Facebook pages and I saw all the woohoos, I got a new baby, and yahoo, I you know booked six shows and I had a thousand dollar show, and you know, I'll be very honest with you. I, I read all those posts and as as much as in my heart I wanted to be happy for everybody, and I hate saying this, but um, someone told me they felt the same way, so I feel a little bit better that it's not just me being a bad person. <laughs> The more I saw everybody else being successful, it just had an opposite effect on me. Instead of boosting me up, I became more discouraged and disappointed in myself. Because I'm like, the last thing I want to hear is everybody else having a great time when I'm sitting on my couch eating my Cheetos, feeling dark to myself, having a little pity party. Um, and I think it's just a vicious cycle. The more disappointed and discouraged you get, you just get into that when I come my funk, and it's hard to get yourself out of it. Um, so uh, I wish I could tell you that I had one sort of aha moment that sort of brought me out of my little funk, but it wasn't just one thing. Um, I just finally decided that I needed to do something. I figured I had to do anything, just something. So I took it one day at a time, started with little baby steps, and this is what I did. So here's your note parts. <laughs> All right, so number one is I reached out to positive premier people. I call it now my three P's. Don't ask me where I come up with these bizarre things, but it's my three P's. Positive premier people. Um, I knew by looking at all those Facebook posts who was being successful and who is rocking their business, and so I reached out and asked for help. Um, and one of my little helpers is here. Thank you, Millie, my new little yeah. best friend. And she is awesome, and she is one of the ladies that has helped me get out of that little funk. Um, I needed encouragement. Um, I needed someone to believe in me. And you will quickly find out the more people you talk to that you're not alone, and it makes you feel better. Um, so uh, these gals really helped start to bring me out of my funk because I got lots of positive encouragement from my new friends. Number two, I went to every training opportunity I could find. All right? I got my butt off the couch. A lot of days, I, you know, I have a challenging job at work. Last thing I felt like was going to training. I'd better go home, sit on the couch, and eat my Cheetos, and have my little pity party. Do you but really I like Cheetos? I love Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> I love Cheetos. I like Cheetos. I just said I want to know if that was a phrase or if you like Cheetos. I love Cheetos. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> So I, I made myself 
Kafka. I forced myself to go to trainings. I went to everything I could find. I went to the trainings. I went to the OPs at Panera that you guys were all having. I didn't have a prospect, but I went. I went because I needed to be around positive people. Uh, I went because I needed that encouragement. And I knew that there'd be a pick-me-up jeweler there, a positive, successful jeweler. And I'll be very honest with you, in the back of my head, I was hoping maybe nobody would show up. And I'd have some one-on-one -on -one time with somebody that could really help me start my business. And that helps. That's happened more than once. So I got one-on-one -on -one time sitting at Panera with some of the most um, awesome, Gary, and a few other girls, uh, jewelers in Premier. And uh, that one-on-one -on -one time was just invaluable. So what it did was it helped me feel better about myself. It, it, the feeling that you get when you go to trainings, you, you leave here. So imagine if, if you're in a funk, if you do that two times a week, or at least once every week, find something to go to and surround yourself with those three Ps, your positive group, your people, pretty soon you'll get out of your little funk and start feeling better about yourself and life in general, and you can focus and get your business back on track. And I'm totally off my notes, <laughs> but that's what I did. Um, <laughs> so what I wrote here is we need to stop making excuses and just do it. Um, and I went to all these things to keep pre premier priority in my life. You really have to keep it in the forefront of your mind because life will take over very quickly and you get sidetracked. And it's hard to get back on track once you're off. All right, number three, uh, I listen to daily trainings. I do this now at work. I listen to trainings at work on the, instead of listening to the radio. Uh, I listen on my lunch hour. Um, there's so many wonderful trainings out there that I, in the three years I've been in, I wasn't taking advantage of. On Premier's website, there's oodles and oodles of trainings. Just listen to them, they're so uplifting. Doesn't matter what training you pick, just click on somebody's face and listen to them. <laughs> it will motivate you and incite you. Um, there's those uh, core conference calls on Tuesdays, and all those things are pre recorded so you can listen to them afterwards. I can't listen always at 10 o'clock on Tuesday because my boss is bugging me, but I can listen to them. Uh, there's the Jemmies and Jewelries on Sunday night, same thing if you're too sleepy at 9 o'clock at night, Sunday, listen to it on Monday sometime. Um, the Draper's website, I gotta tell you, I, I was gonna bring my little Randy t shirt, but I didn't. Uh, but if y'all don't know who Randy Draper is, I am fixated on Randy Draper. Uh, he is my newest best friend. Um, Randy Draper, I could listen to 24-7, mm -hmm. and I have clicked on his videos. I have him downloaded, I think my daughter did because I don't know how to work my phone, but she <laughs> put this little YouTube, YouTube thing right on my phone, so all I have to do is push a little YouTube button and Randy Draper pops up. Uh, thanks to this Melissa Belpano put a post somewhere that she would still be listening to trainings on her way to her shows, and I had that, oh, I'm going to do that. So I listen to Randy Draper on my way to my shows. You know, we all go to those shows and you're driving in the car thinking, oh, it's a great motivator. Home show. Don't feel like the jewelry lady. And you're praying for some way to get yourself pumped and excited so you can be the perky jewelry lady when you hit the door. Well, if you listen to Randy Draper for even 10 minutes, you will be the perky jewelry lady by the time you hit that hostess's door. So download it to your phone somehow and click on the button and listen to Randy in your car. Phone in your car. At any time. Like, right. That's great. Yeah. I mean, he is just. Uh, can't say no or you can just all the, sorry all those call-in things that you have the playback. Call in and answer yeah. your phone and listen no, while you drive. The no, he did. Oh, oh, yes. oh, yes. yes. oh, yes. oh, yes. <laughs> I, I do that on my on my way to my shows now. It gets me pumped up. It gets me re-energized and, and motivated. So that helps too. All those trainings, just listen to one every day, and it just keeps again keeps Premier in the forefront of your mind and helps you feel a little bit better about yourself. So do that too. Uh, but Randy Draper, uh, I call it my daily dose of Draper. It's my <laughs> phrase. <laughs> my daily dose of Draper. Um, and it helps. And I bought one of his uh, happy to do it t shirts. Um, so I see that um, every night. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> here, but Andre and Melissa Bohanna, they post those inspiration quotes. I don't know where they all come from, but they're amazing. Um, I print them all out. My fridge is covered. My bulletin board at work is covered with inspirational quotes. I mean, they're so relatable, and it always seems when I click on one of it, it's just what I'm feeling like that day. It's like, oh, I really needed to hear that. And it just helps to, to pick you up. So if you do that, 
every day, again, just positive things to help get you feeling better. I'm not going to interrupt you the whole time, but it's there's okay. an app called sure. Now. If you don't yeah, have it, it's 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 you it's it's it is awesome. Every day, just three times a day chimes. Is it like brings you back to the present. And it says, like, you know, like, today we walk through a door. Every time you walk through a door, try to bring yourself to exactly where you are. It's like a great app. Yeah, it's called yeah. Now. And it's free. And it's free. Yeah. Yeah. but it helps you just in life feel better about yourself. And when you're in those slumps, because we all have those slumps, these are the things that help sort of bring me out of my little funk. Um, number five is um, praying. And I'll admit to you, this is new for me, but I started praying in my car. I just talked to myself on my way to my shows. I don't know if that's how you pray, but that's what I was doing. Um, and can't hurt. So pray on your way to your show. Or pray whenever. All right. So, um, what I found is, you know, as I've already said, by taking all these little baby steps, um, little by little, day by day, I started feeling better about myself, started feeling better about my business, um, and became re-motivated, um, and it helped me start picking my business back up to where I wanted it to be. Um, we all go through slumps, the trick is to figure out how to get yourself out of it. Um, and keeping Premier on my radar daily has truly changed my focus. Uh, there's one phrase that stuck with me from listening to a lot of these trainings, and it's to be intentional. And if you've been in Premiere for a while, you've heard that, those, that phrase. I've heard it a million times too, but sometimes this time it stuck. Sometimes you have to hear a thing you know, a thousand times before it sort of, that one particular day, it resonates with you and it, it makes a difference. But you need to be intentional uh, with your business. It won't just happen. You can't sit and eat the Cheetos and expect your business to work. You have to plan for it, and you have to make a conscious decision to just do it. Uh, Randy's got a training out there, just do it. Listen to that one, it's great. All righty. Um, the other key to turning my business around, I learned from Randy, again, my best friend, at our roundup, all right? Um, he told us to stop prejudging. And I will admit, too, I'm being very honest here, that I was one that wasn't consciously doing it, but I was prejudging. And you um, lost my place. Yeah. Um, prejudging. So. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I realized that I was. Um, and again, I've heard it a million times, so Randy said it that day, and for some reason that sort of stuck with me that day. Uh, I went back to work um, at Strong uh, the day after Roundup, and I was again so pumped and so excited. I had a new sort of uh, epiphany, and I started doing um, what I call bracelet dates. I started doing lunchtime OPs. I talked to a couple of managers at my in my department who I had known, and uh, asked them if I could just uh, ask the girls in their particular area if they would meet me on their lunch hour in our conference room for a quick little let me share uh, practice sharing premiere with them uh, and I'd give them a free bracelet and of course they said yes and these were girls that I had already written off I'd worked with some of these two three four years and I'd written them off because I've already in my mind decided that nah, they wouldn't want well, everyone to be a jeweler yet and they wouldn't even want to buy jewelry um, and so I stopped prejudging I did a couple lunchtime OPs. I called them my bracelet days. Come sit, bring your lunch. Let me just practice. I did the practice sharing from here because it took the pressure off of me. I didn't feel like I was doing a real OP. I told them right from the get-go, I'm just going to practice because I'm new at this, so let me know what you think. And it took all the pressure off of me having to feel like I'm trying to talk them into something. And I sponsored a new baby from doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, stop prejudging. Look outside the box. Yeah. Um, I changed my focus. It's not about me. It's about them. And you hear that a million times too, but until you sort of really get that, I don't think your business is going to go anywhere because Premier is not about us. It's about helping to serve others. And that's really changed my focus and I think changed my business. Hey, one of the quick, do I have time? Mm -hmm. The one the quick thing. One of the other things that I started doing, um, I just was on vacation with my mom and my daughter this past week. I went to Virginia Beach and I am not a book reader. I hate to read. I will admit, I haven't read anything since I was forced to in school. <laughs> um, other than, all right, I'll share. I did read 50 Sheets of Grey last year. And I'm trying to be something a little bit more productive. So, it's a non-premier thing, sorry. I know. So, we went on vacation to 
this past week and I got three books that I'd heard from gals at trainings and around that, that were good. So I went to the store and I bought three books and I read them all in one week, which is wow. amazing for me because I hate to read. <laughs> but they're really interesting. And, and there was one quick little couple pages I want to just read out of this one particular book. What's the book? It's called, um, the, this one's called The Power. It's the sequel to, it's called The Secret, mm -hmm. which was yes. the one I heard about originally, but the sword didn't have a secret, so I bought The Power. But the um, author is Rhonda Byrne, B-Y-R-N-E, and she tells you that you don't have to have read The Secret to understand the power. So that was good. And this is what I read, and I actually hear to this page when I was sitting at the beach, because I knew I wanted to tell you all about it. So when they talked to it, I could put my glasses on, because I'm fine. And it, this is the section where it talks about bad feelings, which is where I was a few months ago, just felt bad about everything, and you get that negativity going on in your head. So she says this. You can change anything in your life by changing how you feel. When you change how you feel about a subject, the subject must change. Everything has its perfect place in life, including bad feelings. Without bad feelings, you would never know what it feels like to feel good. You would just feel the one blah feeling all the time because you'd have nothing to compare your feelings to. You wouldn't know what it feels like to feel really happy, excited, or joyful. It's through feeling sadness that you know how good it feels to be happy. You can never remove bad feelings from life because they are part of life, and without them, you wouldn't have good feelings. If you feel bad about having bad feelings, you're adding more power to your bad feelings. Not only will your bad feelings get worse, but you will increase the negativity you're giving out. That's so true. Life is supposed to be fun. When you're having fun, you feel great and you receive great things. When you take life too seriously, you receive serious things. Having fun brings the life you want, and taking things too seriously brings the life you take too seriously. You have the power over your life, and you can use it to design your life in whatever way you want. But for your own sake, lighten up. <laughs> to lighten up about bad feelings, I have imagined bad feelings as wild horses. <laughs> There's an angry horse, a resentful horse, blaming horse, sulky horse, cranky horse, grumpy horse, a durable horse, you name it, there's a stable full of bad feeling horses. If I feel some disappointment over something that has happened, then I say to myself, why did you climb on the disappointment horse? Get off it now because it's headed for more disappointment and you don't want to go where it's going. And so I imagine bad feelings as wild horses I climb on. And if I climbed on them, then I can get off them too. I don't see bad feelings as something that is the real me or anyone else, because that is not the truth. Bad feelings are not who you are, and they are not who anyone is. A bad feeling is something you allowed yourself to feel, and you can choose to get off that horse as fast as you jumped on it. If you think of bad feelings as a wild horse that you climbed on, it's one way to take the power out of bad feelings. If someone close to you is cranky, your bad feeling will have, far, will have far less power to affect you if you imagine them as having climbed on a cranky horse. You will not take their crankiness so personally. But if you do take it personally and you become cranky from their crankiness, then you just jumped on the cranky horse with them. And so with anything in life that I don't want, I use my imagination to have fun and take the power out of what I don't want. Sometimes watching myself or other people ride wild horses in various life situations makes me laugh. And when you can laugh yourself out of a bad feeling, that is really something. You have just changed your life. So if you're feeling bad, don't give that bad feeling more power by beating up on yourself that you feel bad. If you do that, you're just whipping the wild horse into a bigger negative frenzy. The idea is not to hate bad feelings, but to deliberately choose good feelings and choose them more often. I love it. Yeah. Yeah.